Welcome to the next segment of Real Estate Live number 44, Time Management Secrets of CEOs. Mark Johnson is today's guest, and he is the CEO of a 3,500 agent company in 50 markets. So, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, David, thank you so much for having me, and thank you for your contributions uh, for the, to this industry. It's amazing, and I'm inspired by you and what you do for us. You keep us informed, you keep us trained, and that's really, uh, you maybe not hear this a lot, but thank you for all you do for us. Well, that's kind of you to say, Mark. I appreciate it. Pleasure to work with you. Obviously, you're a great time manager. So in this video, I want to hear, and your agents want to hear, what is it that you do to become a good time manager? Well, the first thing is I set an intention. And as we know, the chief obstacle in front of us to achieve any of the goals is the world one of the daily activities, those things that appear to be urgent, but uh, versus the important. Well, that was one of the things we were talking about before that that agents go through their entire day and stuff comes at them and all of a sudden it's late in the day and they think, my gosh, I haven't gotten anything done. And so that's the challenge agents are facing today, right? Uh, totally. And David, as you and I know, uh, I've done a lot of research in this area and myself personally, there's two types of agents out there today. There's the, uh, the ones that tell their time and money where to go and those that just let it happen. Okay. Right? It works with money too. You're going to tell your time and money where to go and you're going to be in charge or you're going to let these things whip you around like the uh, tail on a dog. And how can agents get into that first group? Well, so to get into the first group, it first starts with an intention. It starts with a mindset, right? That mindset that I am going to manage my time. I'm in charge of my time and my money. And there's a number of techniques. There's all kinds of different techniques out there, David. We know uh, time blocking, time chunking. Uh, one that I use is what I call the daily action checklist. That doesn't necessarily put things in time sequence, but it puts the most important priorities that I want to accomplish today, this week, this month, this quarter. Uh, and some people like to put time frames around them. Some like to put them in uh, the, the old to-do list in a sense. So intention is the heart of all of this, it sounds like. It's the heart of all of it. And if you think about it, the last time you went on vacation, the two days before you went, how productive were you? Because you knew. You see, here's the concept, David, that you and I know. Uh, if I assign, if, if, if I'm going to redo my listing presentation, I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to give myself 90 days to do that. Or I'm going to give myself 90 minutes. Either way, it's going to get done. <laughs> and so... One of the techniques that I use is I assign a time limit and I work in, I do work in 90 minute chunks and 90 day cycles. So I'll say, hey, today, here's a project that I wanna get done. I'm gonna assign these 90 minutes and I'm my phone's off, everything's off. And in that 90 minutes, I attack that particular project. And then when the 90 minutes is up, it's I declare it perfect. Two things I get out of that is when you know there's an end, I think it's a lot easier to do stuff. It's like even in the gym, when you know you do 12 reps, it's like at the end of 12, I'm good. So the second part is, is when you assign time to something, right? T time is going to expand to, work is going to expand to the time you give it, right? So one of the secrets I found of my top performing agents and myself is we assign specific times uh, and turn everything off, all disruptions, all distractions for that 90 minute sprint. I call them 90 minute sprints yep. and 90 day sprints. Thank you very much. So 90 minute time blocks and right turn now. everything off. Yeah. Like right now for this video, we made sure we turned all of our distractions off. So we didn't want that right. ding to, to, to move us aside. Now, the other thing I think, David, that's important and, and you are a master of relationships. Uh, I've learned a lot from you in terms of relationships. When, when we talk about time management and, and uh, it, it's easy to get focused on the tasks but, but relationships versus tasks are, are something that we really have to keep in mind. Are we time blocking? Are we daily action checklisting our relationship activities? I think about that list of people that I need to call and often I'll, it'll be months and I go, oh yeah, I forgot to call Sherry or Dave or whoever my friend is. And I, and I realize one of the best ways to deal with it is actually have a little list of, hey, some people that I wanna stay in touch with. And you're right, relationships are absolutely critical. Yeah, and it's so easy in time management for us to get so focused on the task-oriented things, but we're all in the relationship business. And so yeah. 
you know, I, I convert those tasks to relationships. Now I do use, David, I do use, uh, I'm a, I happen to be an iPhone user and an Apple user, and I use a lot of the organic apps. There are some apps out there that I have uh, tested. Uh, the product, Productive app is one that helps with uh, these kind of things. It'll prompt you for daily habits and daily reminders, and some people may choose to use that. I, I choose to use the iPhone organic apps, but there's lots of tools out there to help. Speaking of that, what would you say would be a good daily plan for an agent? If they want to visualize their day, maybe in 90 minute chunks, how, how would you structure their daily plan? Well, first and foremost, um, relationships and money-making activities. So I would pr prioritize those first uh, in my day. Uh, the money-making activities, as we know, whatever word you want to use it, prospecting, business development, um, you know, everyone wants to do, put different words and labels on it, but it's, you know what we're talking about. It's d creating business. Yeah, we've, for, for years we use the term prospecting and people, I don't like to prospect, so then we call it lead generation. And as we, we have to keep changing the names to get people to do the fundamental thing. To do the fundamentals. And, uh, it's still prospecting. So first, money-making activities. Mm -hmm. Then we have existing clients that we need to service, right? It doesn't do any good if, if we've done all this prospecting and money-making activities and we're not servicing them because we won't get the repeat. And, and then finally, the uh, relationships. Uh, those three things have to come first and come first in, in my day. Okay. And I know you've kind of addressed this, but I'm going to hear you a little bit more on how do you stay focused? What is it within you that gives you that discipline to stay focused? My goals and ambitions are bigger than my distractions. Oh, I like that. And so I constantly have had to train myself. We talked about one of the things is mindset and the intention. And I have to set that intention every day. And I have to re, it's like re-come back to the mindset. Here's my goals. Here's my ambitions. Here's my dreams. Is that more important than this distraction that just came up? And the more and more I practice that discipline, that routine, it's, it, it, it now is almost automatic for me when a distraction comes up. I'll automatically go in, how does this fit? Is this aligned with my goals, my dreams, and my ambitions? Perfect, great answer. Uh, goals are more important than your distractions, thank you. Yeah. We uh, talked a little bit earlier on about uh, vacations, and I, and I think it's important that agents schedule personal time. So let's talk about how you might deal with personal time, scheduling it, et cetera. You know, one of the things, uh, I'm a follower of D David Allen, who wrote this book about being more productive and getting stuff done. And uh, and as you know, uh, both you and I uh, are friends with, with Tom Ferry. And uh, I, I learned this from Tom, uh, where I look at, I've already looked at 2022. And I've put in, uh, like I know the uh, last week of July next year, I'm gonna be doing an event with two of my sons. That's in my calendar already. So I've looked at 2022 already and I've put in the chunks of time that I wanna to devote to family, vacation, rest and relaxation. Now I'm gonna build the time that's remaining for my uh, work and career goals, dreams and ambitions. So that's just one technique. Well, and I, that's, that's obviously a great one. I've said in goal setting, when I do a goal setting seminar, I open up with, all right, let's set a vacation. They go, wait a minute, we're not talking about prospecting. No, 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 no. First thing on your calendar is vacation times, you know, date night with spouses, you know, whatever it is, that personal thing, golf, racing, everybody's got that time. And I truly believe that that goes on the calendar first because you don't want anything to get in the way of it. And, but I think as we've said, it improves business. When you know you've taken a break, it's a lot easier to work when you know, hey, I got a break coming up. I get to leave town or be with my spouse or whatever. So I think those are actually important ways to create revenue. It really is. So, David, it's like when we started, there's two types of agents, those who tell their time and money where to go or those who just react to the day. What we're doing here is saying, hey, I'm telling my time where to go. I'm going to spend these weeks uh, for rest, relaxation and relationship building. And then the time left. Now I have a sense of purpose to say, oh, you know, here's the number of days I have to get done, the work, the prospecting and money making activities the projects and, and all of that. So to me, what it does is drive me uh, to be more productive each and every day. Absolutely. And I know we've talked about this a little bit. I want to get a bit 
more specific. So we have an agent who watches this, decides that uh, this agent wants to tell time where to go, but you use the word react. And I think every agent I've met, <laughs> including me, it's so easy to be reactive. Any final advice on how to stay focused rather than the reactive? Because, by, and by the way, some of those things to which they must react are important, maybe a client, something going on. So let's talk about that. One of the things I do to answer your question, and I've seen high performance uh, successful agents do, is use a daily planner, whether that's electronic or old fashioned paper, the high performance planner every morning walks you through. What are the top three priorities for the day? What are the must do things? Notes, a, a number of questions that prompt you in your mindset for the, for the day. And that's what I find helps me stay on track. The daily action checklist, I can go back, even though I got disrupted and I've got to handle this emergency, I can go back to say, but here were the three important things I said must happen before I lay my head down to rest at the end of the day. Yeah. Reminds me of something else. I believe it's my dentist and maybe even uh, physicians. Uh, you try to book an appointment with them. They're booked out for the next six months. But if you have an emergency, they'll take you today. And I believe we can check with some doctors that actually build in time of the day for when that happens. And perhaps as realtors, we can build in that time of the day, say, okay, let's, let's have some time for those things. And the other thing that comes to mind is you can prevent reactions coming to you if you go to them first, such as calling all your buyers and sellers on a Sunday night and maybe getting ahead of it. As you and I know, uh, as broker owners and leaders in the industry, one of the number one complaints that we do get from consumers is lack of communication. We can prevent all of those things just by being, and I know you have a number of training videos on, on how to uh, do you know uh, updates and communicate with clients and, and keep the information flowing. And when you do that, you're now being proactive versus having to react to all these emergencies. Yeah, yeah, good. So I think we've come up with some good answers for that. Uh, before I wrap up this interview and let you get on to your emergency, I always like to ask the final question. Is there any uh, method that I have not asked you about that you would like to respond to? Any final words? I, I would. And, and David, what I would say everyone to our audience is pick something, right? Whether it's the productive app, whether it's like me with the iPhone uh, organic apps, whether it's the high performance planner, there's no judgments. It's what works for you. You have to just pick something and move forward powerfully. So if you're listening today, make a decision, make an intention and act on it within the next two hours. Take an action, order the planner, go out, get the productive app, start uh, blocking your time, whatever those are, take action immediately. Mark, thank you so much for being a part of our video. You and I have worked together a lot and I really appreciate you taking the time to share your methods because I know our viewers are gonna gain a lot. So thank you very much for being a part of this. Well, you're welcome, David. And again, I can't wait to see it and be back to contribute more. All right, thank you very much, Mark. See you later. Take care.